I'm Robert McMullen. I'm a psychiatrist. I've been in practice over 30 years, mainly doing psychopharmacology, specializing in the medication treatment of various mental illnesses, including depression. And what I would uh, like to talk about is, is TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation, versus ECT, which is shock treatment or ECT stands for electroconvulsive therapy. And these are extremely different treatments. The only thing they have in common is that they provide stimulation to the brain. And ultimately, it's sort of an electrical stimulation. The way shock treatment works is that electricity is run from one side of the brain to the other, usually. Sometimes it's run from uh, on one side of the brain from the front to the back, but you run a powerful amount of electricity through so that you induce a seizure, a grand mal epileptic seizure. And it seems that the epileptic seizure is what causes the benefit. And uh, this was discovered uh, in part because many years ago, like in the 20s and 30s, they noticed in mental hospitals that people that were severely depressed and they kept losing weight and were starving because of their depression, eventually they began to have seizures because their metabolism was so altered and their electrolytes were off. And they noticed that after they had the seizures, sometimes their depression started to improve. So some of the doc doctors thought, well, maybe it's not that the seizures are predicting they're getting better, but maybe it's the seizures that are causing the benefit. So then they developed ways of inducing a seizure, and sure enough, it helps. Now, the problem with uh, ECT is that it causes uh, all the many of the neurons to, to discharge across the whole brain and uh, and you become unconscious for a few minutes and uh, and then when you wake up you have a headache and you're a bit confused and your memory is poor for a while and you have anterograde and retrograde amnesia you you don't remember things from a little while back plus you forget things a little bit in the future for a while, your memory's bad. And when you receive 10 of these ECT treatments over a three-week period, that'll often bring you out of depression, but you're left with having some memory loss that may take months, you know, two, three months or more to recover from. And there are reports of people who have had ECT and their memory never came back to normal. And I've met a few of these people. Uh, for example, I had a patient who said he had ECT three times in his life, about 10 years apart, and each time it worked terrific. He was in a massive depression and he came out of it and was much better. But he said after the third one, his memory never really returned to normal. There's a lot of things from his childhood and his past that he no longer remembers. But he did after the first two times. So there's a bit of a risk, and it's in the textbooks too that this risk exists, although it's not common. Now the difference with TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation, is a giant magnet is put on the head, usually either here or here, or in the brainsway machine, it's over the whole head. And uh, you create a, a very powerful magnet for a fraction of a second. It goes on and off. And that magnetic field easily penetrates the brain. Whereas when you run electricity through the brain, it's very difficult. If you try to run electricity from this side of the brain to this side in a small amount, which is done with certain machines. The electricity mainly goes around the side, because it doesn't want to go through the skull. But the skull 
doesn't obstruct the magnetic field at all. So it's a very easy way of putting a mild amount of stimulation into the brain without harming the brain. And when one does this the usual way, it's usually done with a activating, stimulating uh, magnetic pulses on the left dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, basically the left uh, forehead. Then after you have these treatments that last about 30 minutes, in 10 days or three weeks, the person is obviously coming out of their depression. And then by 30 treatments, which is usually five times a week, six weeks, about 50% of people will be all the way to normal. And many of them have not been at normal in many years. And the uh, interesting thing is, is that the benefit is durable. It lasts a long time. The main person who studied uh, ECT and later on he studied uh, TMS at Columbia was Harold Sackheim. And he said that TMS is better than ECT because not only is it more comfortable and it's safer and you don't have to be put to sleep to have it done. You don't have a seizure. It's much less risky. But besides that, it's more long lasting. That if you get ECT and you come out of a massive depression, it's not unusual to be back in that depression in six months or a year, and then you need another 10 ECT. With TMS, it's fairly frequent that people will not relapse for a longer period of time. We have a few people that have gone over three years since their treatment and they've stayed in a normal mood, euthymic, this entire time, though they were never euthymic prior to TMS. And when they do relapse, they don't need another 30 treatments. Usually you just need a few treatments, five or six treatments. And some people get maintenance treatment that they are going to relapse unless they get two treatments a month or one treatment a week or something like that. That happens also. But that's relatively easy to tolerate when it's a treatment that you go in, have it in 30 minutes, it's comfortable, and then you get out of the chair and you go to work for the day. It doesn't interfere with your life except for taking up that amount of time. So who do you recommend to use the electric shock and who you recommend to use a, the magnetic? Well, there, there was recently a meta-analysis done uh, comparing ECT and TMS. In a, in a psychiatric journal, and uh, and these writers concluded that the TMS worked as well as ECT, and I think it does too. That you've got as high a percentage of people that get better as with ECT, except in one situation. If it's a delusional depression, then the the ECT, the shock treatment, is much better. So. If you've got a normal guy, six months ago he was perfectly normal and holding a job and doing well, but now he's extremely depressed and he believes that his sins have caused the Afghanistan war and he's extremely guilty about it and he has delusions about this, then uh, TMS is not likely to work so well for him, but ECT is likely to work extremely well. I actually think that TMS may work better than ECT because when you compare 30 TMS to the standard 10 ECT, they seem to be more or less equal using our modern parameters. But there's nothing keeping us from going on and doing 60 or 90 TMS treatments. So if one can go on and do more treatments, then you're going to get a much higher percentage of people all the way better. Where it's a little harder to justify going much more than 10 ECT treatments because the confusion gets so severe. Plus, it's a lot of uh, 
trouble to go down and be under anesthesia and, and, and have somebody take you down there and have to bring you back. With TMS, you don't have to have anybody bring you home. You just go there on your own, and then after the treatment's over, you can go to school or go to work. Uh, there's no necessity for somebody to drive you there and drive you back. Thank you very much, Dr.